you from the production side, like who um, provide like um, the offer. So what do you need also, uh, from a governance perspective to get into this innovation process that you will um, have an um, economic way of um, yeah, get this hardwood timber into production that's like available and affordable for, for the broader audience? I would say that um, this has many many aspects. Uh, first of all, it's it has an aspect aspect of how do we produce a product. <clears throat> Here, I would say that we do maybe research and development on our own, like glue, or for instance, or we talk to our glue suppliers how they can deal in the future with oak. Yeah, um, but of course, we also work with some institutes. Uh, here's a famous uh, VKE in, in in northern Germany where we where we deal with them for in some special projects. Where I see the biggest difficulties, but this is my perspective now from wood purchase, is that this whole logistic chain will, will change so much from, from harvesting the trees, uh, what we have seen before on the, on the areas of spruce, and now with uh, different uh, assortments and with different owners, and then getting the wood to the plant. I think uh, this, will be, this will be for the logistics change a big topic, and uh, this has a big impact on the on the um, financial situation, yeah? Because when you lose a lot of money there, uh, how much can you charge to your customer in the, in the future, yeah? Here are some, I think the, the good thing in Germany is that we have a lot of institutions. Uh, we, we, for instance, cooperate also with the uh, KWF here in Germany. So uh, also for the logistics or for the supply chain, we have some projects in, in digitization, uh, interfaces for the forestry business. So here a lot of institutions and universities uh, connected and they have a, no, a lot of knowledge. But I feel a little bit that everyone is a little bit uh, overwhelmed from this new situation. Yeah, I think you mentioned it earlier already. And we all believe that uh, the, the, the future will be like the past, but it won't be. Yeah, So I think this is what we struggle right now. Right now. But what we need is, of course, support and projects from institutions, from politics uh, uh, to understand more that also the need for, for wood from the forest, uh, there's a need for, for wood out of the forest for the industry. Yeah. May I add something? Um, I'm coming from a university, so I'm a scientist. I'm not coming from a production side. So <clears throat> but, um, when I think what we need is, first of all, we need a communication strategy between the forest and the wood science. <laughs> Um, because you mentioned birch, I'm a huge fan of fan of birch. So every student of mine know that I'm a huge fan of birch, <clears throat> because um, in every wood property, it is at least as good as beech or better. But we promote so much beech, and you mentioned it as well. Um, and we see that in every single project, beech is the most complicated wood species we have to. We have faced so many problems in different properties. You just mentioned density. Uh, density, it's quite heavy, that's one point. But when we come to other wood properties like durability or dimensional stability, beech is the most complicated wood species. So from a wood um, scientist, I, I, I do not... I can't understand why beach is um, so important in the, or it getting even more important in the uh, German forestry. And um, 15 years ago, everybody was telling me beach is probably one of the climate stable wood species. We haven't seen, we have seen within the last five years that it's, she's not. So we need a little bit more open strategy. Wood species, which wood species would be suitable to face a climate crisis. Maybe these are not our native ones, or maybe not the ones which we think first. Um, and beside that, uh, I could say we need some money. <laughs> you ask what we need for, um, because just an example, nowadays in Germany or in Europe, it is not allowed to produce, or not in Germany, Switzerland is a little bit different. Um, it is not allowed to produce a glue lamb made from birch because the strength uh, grading is not, the, we have the problems with the strength grading. We do not know how because uh, the standards are not available and we do not have a glue which is allowed to use them for lot bearing constructions. And we need 
really that sounds so easy and I believe many of you can't believe it um, that we do not know many many strength properties of our native hardwoods in the standard they are just not listed because we never use them and um, for example we do not have certain compression strength values which are or um, tension strength values which are necessary for calculating wooden houses for many, many wood species, for example, for birch. So it is just not, we are not able to calculate the beam cross sections uh, for to build a house. And the tests are pretty simple, but you need a lot of material, a lot of time, and that at the end costs a lot. And if we do not see a political wish or, yeah, that the politicians are willing to support that, that won't work. Because no um, small or um, small company would be able to pay for, to get or to uh, create all these values which would, be um, which would be necessary to produce certain products. And um, if it's not coming from the political side, I guess we can't solve that problem. And from my perspective here, I'm working in the Department of Wood Biology and Wood Products. We need actually human resources. <laughs> if we, we have more projects, then we can find people that would like to work for us. So um, that's, of course, a problem what you probably have to... S yeah. I would assume that's yeah. pretty much the same. Yes. We can hardly find somebody who would like to work for us because um, universities are not paying very well. And... Um, that's the third wish. I mean, we have a wish list here, like <laughs> in fairy tales, yeah, but uh, that would be one. Yeah. Thank you. Okay, I think, believe we have questions in the audiences. <coughs> okay, I try to keep myself short because I'm not too experienced with food processing and so on, and I, I got uh, a lot of really important messages from your presentations. So my basic question was at first, like, okay, in an innovative cycle, then we have to adapt a lot to processing hardwood more and so on, and you said that, and it's hard for policy-wise, but also from scientific scientific basis. So uh, my one question would be, where do you see kind of tipping points in policy where this would have to be touched? Like, we talk now a lot about what sh we should have <laughs> and what's the problem, but I'm also really interested in if you have any experience where this already worked, this innovative cycle to adapt the industry. And if you maybe see certification also as a power, uh, a driving power. Both answer, just maybe into the change who answers first and then you don't have to though. <laughs> yeah, maybe I start. The tipping point is really difficult to define, yeah? Uh, I mean, we just learned that also when I thought about this presentation a little bit more, these 20, 30 years, I mean, the, the transformation in forestry is, I mean, this is the nature of forest. It's, you need to think in long circles, yeah? So I think that this makes it also difficult for politicians. I mean, they look usually for the next four, five years uh, until the next election, but this doesn't work in forestry, yeah? So, uh, and I think this is what we struggle a little bit, that uh, we, what we do, we, we ask a lot of politicians to visit our sites, we invite them and we make some promotion and say that we need wood and it's a economical friendly product and these things, this is what we are doing, but how many people can you, how many politicians you can reach by this, yeah, not very much. Of course, we also work in associations and we try to promote and Bring it more to the uh, bring it to more to the politicians in Berlin. Uh, I think the forest or the, the wood industry was very poor until ten years ago with these topics to really intervene uh, with with uh, with uh, with politics because it was always local business before maybe. But now that we face so much uh, problems or challenges that we need the support of the politicians. Yeah, but in the end, it's PR what you are doing and try that they he listen to us. Uh, yeah, but it's not easy. Yeah, I would say. Yeah, especially in Germany, everybody has a opinion concerning the forest. Yes. Um, <clears throat> and even if they have no ideas about who is the owner or which management concept is behind a forest, uh, everybody of my neighbor would have a, an opinion. 
And that makes it actually pretty complicated. From my point of view, it's quite clear. How can we plant a tree which is not useful in the wooden industry in such an amount of area? I do not understand that. And the typical answer I get from everybody beside the wooden, um, the wood scientists is you have to work harder to find solutions. And that is not really useful because, again, there are some material properties. If we are talking about wood species related properties, that are material properties. Now, you can change, um, you can change the property of concrete in such a strong way. Um, that it has a totally different, I don't know, elastic uh, property or something. It's the same with uh, beach. Yeah, if, you, if we're talking about dimensional stability and durability, it is the worst wood species we can ever think about. If we decide that we want to plant it because of biodiversity reasons and also because of um, nature management concepts, I do not see where I can work, where I can. I can influence a tipping point. But let me underline one thing, and I think I totally agree with you, that the forest in Germany is so special from in the society. Everyone likes to walk in the forest. I mean, everyone can walk in the forest, even if it's you know, not your property, which is totally okay. But I think we have a very fairy tale thinking about forest. Yeah? And when I travel through the world, I see a totally different mindset. Yeah, they they see, of course, biodiversity is important, but they always see the the really importance of of products out of the forest. Yeah, where we in Germany, yeah, like recreation and it should grow nicely, and we want to see the big trees. And uh, uh, I think this is especially a challenge for Germany because we have this mindset. And uh, with this challenge, what we face here, it's not easy to to overcome it. Yeah, when we when we when we and we stay in this. I mean, we talk about, about protection uh, areas, what we want to protect now, uh, 10%, 20%, which we totally take out of use. Yeah. So we voluntarily say that 10%, 20%, we fully take out of use. We don't make any raw materials or we don't harvest there anything. Yeah. I mean, when a society uh, decides this way, of course, it's okay. But then it will have an impact on, on, on the industry for sure and on available products. Yeah. And what I don't like. And on price. By and the on way. price. Yeah. And what I don't like is, I mean, where do you buy this table from? Uh, then the table comes from, I don't know, some, some plantations in South America. If we like it more that the table comes for 10,000 kilometers from South America uh, than from our local forest, I mean, it's okay that this, in the end society decides. But I think it's, this is, always a very difficult discussion in Germany. Yeah? Everyone likes to buy wood products, but it shouldn't come out of the German forest. Yeah? That is exactly what they basically visited throughout this uh, couple of weeks program. We see the different structures and the different pulling directions, angles on the forests. And yeah, it's now, um, it's, I think it's very interesting for a lot of people to see this this loud discussion that we have openly because I think we had that everywhere around. Um, yeah. So, yeah. I think we have another question in the crowd. Hello. Oh, hello. Okay. Hello. My question is specifically for you, Christian. Um, so, obviously, we're from an international forestry student association and we understand the value of like diverse perspectives in everything. And I know that you said your company has people from 88 countries. Yes. Um, but I was wondering about the diversity in terms of gender and in terms of um, all those different representations of people from different countries, but in specifically the leadership of your company. Yeah, thank you for this question. This is not easy to answer, I need to say. Uh, I think we are, <clears throat> uh, we as a group uh, and uh, with an ownership, we are we are working on these topics, I would say. Uh, we are fully aware of, of the gender discussions, diversity of people, and also um, when you look to our sustainability report, I think you will find more on this topic. But I agree with you, it's, it's, it's getting more and more important. Uh, but uh, as an industry, this is, not, uh, this is not first priority. It's very important now, and it gets more important in our company, for sure. Yeah. But we are not the early followers usually with, with this kind of topic. So it needs some two, three, four years before it comes to a private company, I would say. Yeah? And we see this now. And um, I think we are very open 
I said that the people are uh, in focus at Egger, yeah. And so I think for us it's very easy because we see the person, we don't see the gender or whatever. Um, for sure, uh, I mean, we are a traditional business. Uh, I would like also to see more women. I mean, this is clear. We have two little women in our organization, especially in management. It's a, I think it's a, it's a failure for us, and we always uh, or we we need to work on this topic. It's not not okay what what's going on there, right now. Um, but everyone from the top management is aware of this, and we are working on it. Yeah, it doesn't say that everything is good tomorrow, but at least it's it's better in the future. I would say. Have another question from the crowd, please. And if possible, state your name okay. and where you're from. Hello, I'm Matthias from Hungary. And uh, thank you for your presentations. These were refreshing of the days of bark beetle close to nature for S3 and animal pressure to hear something uh, more economical topics. And uh, I want to ask that these days are people based their decision on sustainability. So from the point of view of sustainability, uh, um, these recycled and uh, glued uh, wood products, uh, where are they on the scale? Because these are good because the wood is came back to the cycle, the carbon is stored again, and uh, but the glue is, uh, I don't know how much, is that uh, on the sustainability scale and uh, when uh, these products are uh, go to the trash or they can be reused again or uh, mm, if you compare to uh, a fresh root products how sustain which one is the better you uh, as I know, thank you for the question as i understand right you're talking about the glue in our products and the the wood or did I understand right or? Uh, yes, about the glue. Yeah. yeah, as I mentioned before, the, the glue has really a negative impact on our net zero policy, I would say, that unfortunately today, uh, I would say 99% of the glue is based on fossil, fossil materials. Yeah. So we need to work on it, but also here it is not easy yeah, because the whole industry is based on this. And like you mentioned, it needs a lot of research and, uh, uh, and of course, what is also important that you have to see the, the whole picture. It, it's not good when you have a, maybe glue as a renewable material, but in the end, the whole life circle is even worse than what you have before with, with fossil materials. So what we like is to see the whole picture and what we learned so far that it's, uh, even if they are uh, based on biomass, there is some glue available, but the whole balance is even worse than with a fossil, yeah? And, <clears throat> but I think the demand is there, the demand from the industry is there, and I believe that, that all the, the glue producers, uh, the, the big ones, they are working on this topic, but I cannot tell you it's, it's not my core business. Uh, I know that we have it on our agenda, but uh, it's not so easy to solve, I would say. Um. Maybe that change if we have another CO2 tax in Germany. Yes, yeah. Because there are, of course, in a scientific point of view, there are some solutions, but that doesn't make sense because they are way too expensive and um, probably not useful for every single application, but for a few probably would be possible. But with our CO2 um, tax right now, it's difficult to, um, yeah, to convince people, first of all. And on the other side, of course, every country has to think about what does it mean in terms of the globalization? Well, which impact does has a CO2 tax on single productions here? And do they go to other countries and, uh, and, and build up a production line there? Or other companies are then have a, or other companies in other co countries have a, an advantage? It's a complex story at the end. And, um, I had a sh small discussion in the break. At the end, I'm pretty sure that we all have to use less. Mm. Without using less, at least not in the Western world, um, we are still struggling. It doesn't matter how much we do. We also have a question from the online audience. Um, and that would be... You um, also on the uh, process of change. You said earlier that there is an industry changing process which still takes time. 
How's the research and knowledge page for these changes in the future? Is the foundation laid already to make these changes in the... Um, I think this was meant on the forestry isn't changing in the next one or two decades, but the knowledge basis, if the fundament is already there to start these processes slowly and in time. I guess there are already a lot of knowledge. Somebody has to listen to it. Short and quick. Okay. Yes. Okay, so we have here the next question. Thank you for the presentation. Uh, I'm Kamana Pordel, uh, currently studying at Oregon State University. Um, I'm following up on the idea that you mentioned that using less is good. And my question is to Christian, um, having very little idea on the forest business side, like uh, how do you decide how much to produce? And since um, I think like there is like some percentage of recycled wood and also some percentage of hardwood, what is the current demand? And if the demand is causing the pressure on the harvesting, side and um, so i'm just curious like what is the limiting factor for the production thank you um <clears throat> limiting factors on the production i would say is a is a is our is our conti presses because there's a special length and there's a special speed so of course we try to utilize these machines uh, in the best as can yeah because then you have the best uh, um, cost situation so <clears throat> there are some technical limits from the production itself. Um, and uh, <clears throat> I need to say that this recycling wood is not out of complexity because, it, uh, because we were producing, to some, I mentioned 23% is now uh, recycling, but this is only the average. So we have from in some plants zero and we have in some plants much more over 50%. So uh, it it's variates from plant to plant. And I can see that the complexity on the wood yard and on the in the wet chip preparation is really high for this and we need to uh, take or we need to uh, teach people educate people uh, how to use more recycling wood yeah and uh, of course we need the technical background for it so we have big recycling plants in our plants so there's just a recycling plant within our production board plant it cleans out all the stones, the metals, plastics, dust. So I think net net you have 80% of recycling. 20% is then stones, metals, plastics, whatever. Of course, first of all, you need this. You need to have the 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 the, the production uh, process. But then also you have to convince people and take people with you that it makes sense for us as a company to use more recycling. Yeah. Uh, they have to, of course, it's very easy to use a lock and it's very easy to use sawdust and wood chips because they are all very much same, but recycling the challenge is much higher. Yeah? And you need experts for that. And I think we are just in the process of uh, yeah, getting more experts in these fields uh, and teaching everyone that we like to have circular economy, uh, that everyone understands in our company, all our 11,000 people, uh, what's going on. Yeah. Okay, so we have the next question from Indonesia. Okay, thank you very much for the opportunity. I'm Clara from Indonesia. I would like to a uh, question to Christian, uh, but I would like to uh, hear some opinions in addition from Susint. So the first question says, uh, you have uh, the employees from 88, uh, 88 countries, right? So. How do they influence innovation in use the wood, especially the hard hardwood? Because I'm sure that in many countries, including my countries, Indonesia, um, we already use hardwood for many things, hard hardwood. So is there uh, further like many discussions with uh, other countries regarding this? And the second question is, uh, I've heard about the difficulties in using the oak because of the tannin. Um, is there any development to use the tannins uh, as preservative matters or adhesive for fiberboard in Germany? Um, yeah, that's my question. Thank you. Uh, uh, thank you for your question. Uh, the first question is very interesting to me because I, the last weeks, I also thought about this. Uh, what makes 
what is the difficulty with hardwoods? Yeah, and I think it's not only all the technical parameters for our production. Uh, I think it's in the end it's a chipper. We chip the wood, we get the small particles, and of course when you produce MDF, you put it in a refiner. It's much more challenging because refiner needs more electricity for hard hardwoods. But what I really see as a challenge for us is the diversity of species. When we only put, like in your instance, rubber wood maybe, only into the production, this is very easy because all the time the same species, you, you know, the, the, the whole year is same. Yeah? There are no challenges for production. But what we are doing, we, we now, we have spruce, pine, now more soft hardwoods, then even maybe some beech with this hard. I think this makes a process uh, of wet chip preparation, everything much more complex because you have so different parameters for the wood. Yeah, and I think this is one of the the most challenges. Yeah, beside beech and oak, especially I would say because they are so heavy and so hard. But uh, like in your instance, maybe rubber wood or I don't know. Uh, I think this is much easier. Yeah, because you have only one species. Yeah. And please uh, do not use more oak in uh, particle boards because we have so many other apl applications where we could use at least oak. <laughs> so if you use it now in particle or fiber boards, it would be, from my perspective, a pity. So it's complicated, but um, we have enough products which uh, could be easily made from oak. So I guess not really a need for research in the field of uh, solving oak. the problem with the oak. tannins. Yeah. And the second, yeah, the variability is the one thing. The logistic is the other one. If you are in an area where you have a lot of birch, that's easy. When if you want to build up a plant somewhere and you get just uh, many wood species, you have to solve the problems, for example, with strength grading um, for many wood species. That makes it complicated. So we need some help from the logistic point of view from the forest side. And... Um, yeah, like always in the EU, for everybody who comes from the EU, they know what I'm talking about. We have to remit, we have to meet the requirements in the standards. That doesn't mean that values besides the standards, I mean, they could also work. But if we do not meet the German or the European standards, it's just not allowed to use it. And that makes it complicated. Maybe on this topic, because I saw it earlier in the questions online, if you give a short elaboration of why the, because beach is so much used and you said that it's the dimension that is the problem. There was a little follow up question on why this dimension is so, like this dimension stability is so, such a KO criterion for a lot of applications. It is the main, or well, that's the most important application for indoor applications. So outside it's durability. Again, we in German, we have a five class system for durability in other parts of the world they have a 10 class system um, we in germany we uh, classified beach in f durability class five if we would have 10 classes it would be 10 it is just no other wood species which is so dur durable like beach so it's not useful for outside so therefore we should use it inside and there the dur dimension stability is a problem because um, if you have a high dimension or high yeah high change in dimension depends on the moisture content and in europe we do not especially not in germany we do not have climatized buildings so much um, you have problems with cracks, you have problems with um, getting deformation, we have problems with um, coating systems because of changing the dimension and then cracks occur. We have problems uh, yeah, that boards get round and um, if you have maybe a, a cabinet or something, the door is not able to close anymore because you need to leave so much space between the um, two parts, so the door and also uh, um, yeah, the frame, so um, that just doesn't fit. And uh, dimensional stability, even in, in flooring boards, is a huge problem because we have a huge change in relative humidity in our, within our building. So if you would live in the States, in a building where you have a um, climate, air conditioning. Yeah, air conditioning, and you have um, over the whole year the same temperature and the same um, relative humidity, it's easy, but that's not the case here. And it makes it complicated with just every single process step 
with a building um, a product. Do we have any more questions from? Yeah. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, my name is Bashir Isha Ahmed from Nigeria, and thank you for the presentations. Uh, the company Ega, I think, use a lot of uh, resources like from from the forest for the production of different beautiful different wood materials. So uh, I want to know like uh, the moves your company is making in environmental conservation, since like. Uh, Almost all the raw materials you use are from forest and uh, the ecosystem. So I want to know uh, what are the most your company is making in environmental conservation and in regeneration of those particular forests. Thank you. <clears throat> yeah, thank you for this question. I think I've mentioned it on the in the presentation that uh, we are looking very deeply into wood orig origin and also uh, uh, that uh, uh, timber or, or wood is um, is according to the forest manage uh, for to sustainable forest management so we are very looking very much deep into it and our purchasing areas usually where we purchase have quite a clear law of so you have to replant like in germany you have to replant uh, trees yeah so there's a very the risk factor is 100 from 100 so no risk in germany uh, they all do replanting because it's also uh, beneficial for the wood for the owner and <clears throat> and this we see in many parts in other parts we talk about plantation like in south america maybe in, in argentina where we buy wood uh, there you look uh, we have a certain amount of fsc P pfc mostly so <clears throat> i think it's in the end it's our due diligence process uh, what we have in wood purchase uh, combined with FSC, PFC, and now coming EUDR. So when you look at regulations for wood products, I would say that there are many, many regulations. Yeah, and I don't uh, somehow I don't see it too beneficial that we have so different regulations because in the end, I think the customer wants to know that this timber is from a, a sustainable forest uh, re regrowing and these things. And especially here in Central Europe, we do a lot of work, a lot of bureaucracy with it. Although having a very a clear forest management in place yeah uh, but we need to face it we have a lot of paperwork to do i would say uh, we do external audits um, but as i said we are not so much uh, of course we have this recycling wood we have also sawmill residues uh, so not everything comes from 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 the wood yeah? but it's in our own interest to have the tree uh, forest gets replanting. I mean, we I showed you that we are in a tough market, and for us, it's no help when you cut just the forest and it's gone afterwards. Yeah, but it's yeah. also a question what do you mean by conservation? Yeah, actually, forest conservation. Um, for some people, it's not quite clear. I mean, it's quite clear when I say it loud, but um, in uh, when I talk to people around me, they have nothing to do with forestry or wood science. If you want to use wood, you have to harvest trees. It's pretty easy. So you can have a sustainability or sustainable forest management, but you have to cut trees, point. And um, use something else. If you find something better, I'm totally open. <laughs> but the question is, what are um, options for other materials? And I think maybe to give you an example, I talked, one of my friends is teacher in Hamburg. So living in a very nice area and these things, buying a table and there must be always the FSC logo on it. Yeah. But then I'm in winter time in his place and the chimney is, the fireplace is, is on. Yeah. And it's nice. And I ask him, where do you buy the wood from? I said, yeah, I don't care. I don't care. So you see, this is a big difference. We're talking about the product. Here must be the FSC label. But then when we burn it and we saw how much wood we burn, yeah, and you can go to each uh, DIY market here in Germany and you can buy uh, wood on pellets, which comes maybe from Eastern Europe or wherever. I don't know. Yeah, but no one is asking it. So I think it's a little bit difficult. I mean, we all know we are the professionals. So we make to we have to make sure that due diligence is in place and, and we don't want to uh, we want to have sustainable products. But it's it has different sites yeah and when we just burn wood i think anyway it's not good uh, to burn wood uh, and uh, we should get rid of it uh, so yeah but it has different impacts i would say okay do we have another question here yeah 
Hello, my name's Tim. I'm from the UK. And um, my, I guess it's just made more of a thought, but it seems to be there's a lot of talk about glue lamb and this glue and how there's no way we can have hardwoods or it's hard to make hardwoods work with the glue. But surely glue lamb wasn't a thing more than 60 years ago. So is there not lessons we can learn from back then about how to use hardwoods without needing glue? I don't know, it just seems a bit strange. If you don't need, if you don't want to use glue, that means that the limit dimension of a building is the natural length of a stem, which is complicated in the first point because usually we are building different, so we need longer length, and uh, usually we need also other dimensions. Of course, if I'm not quite sure if you were downtown in Göttingen, there are a lot of frame houses um, built usually by oak, sometimes large in this region. Depends a little bit where you are. And uh, we can be really proud of uh, some houses from 1500 something or 1600 something. Um, yeah, that was possible, but it took a long time for natural processes drying and so on. And we had a really, really strong selection of the trees because big branches wouldn't be allowed in such a beam because they influence the strength properties so negatively that doesn't fit. So you have a really strong selection of the trees which you are using for um, houses before. And that means at the upper side that just a limited uh, number of people is able to buy to, or to build a house. We could think about if this is maybe an option. I mean, we could build in different ways. I don't say this is totally, you know, out of my mind. We have to be open to many ideas. How to, um, how do we create the transformation, which is necessary in many cases, but to, to use the knowledge uh, 60 years ago, that uh, doesn't make sense because we, I mean, 99, 95% of the locks were not be able to be used in building, in the building sector if we wouldn't use glue in the length and in the dimension. Okay, I don't see any more questions. Thank you very much for taking your time to answer all these curiosities. And we have a little thank you gift, obviously, for you to have this presentation here. So a nice little if the cup, so when you wrap your brain around the future challenges of what technology in Germany. You can just enjoy your coffee out of this beautiful mug. Thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> and for all of you, thank you for paying the attention and the questions asked. We will now close the session also for the online audience. And there will be the break, uh, which is a little bit longer because we are, did a very punctual schedule today. You will be having your lunch break either with your lunch packages here on the central campus or feel free to uh, continue in this direction to explore the city center of Göttingen and spend the afternoon however you want. The GA will start here at 3 um, in the afternoon. So be here like 10 minutes before that. Thank you very much.